Hi, I'm Carl from OSP, and this is Communicate, Connect, Grow, the OSP podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about avoiding violent references in your writing with the editing code PAX. About our podcast, if you want to be a more effective writer, a more transparent editor, develop clear strategic thinking, or learn from our network of expert friends and colleagues, that's what we're here for. We divide our episodes across three themes, communicate, connect, and grow. This is a communicate episode, and we're talking about using nonviolent language with our editorial code, PAX. The PAX editing code falls into the style and phrasing part of the editing process. It's about word choice and choosing to use inclusive and human-centric language. In our documentation about this code, it says, aim to use nonviolent language by replacing metaphors around war, sports, and sex with other more peaceful ones. Hello, my name is Felicity Brandt and I'm a communications consultant at Open Strategy Partners. I work as a friendly house elf. I am awake while everyone else is asleep and I edit their hard work so that when they wake up, they're ready to go again. I find PAX to be a really interesting code. It, so it falls within our style and phrasing phase of editing and it's about choosing human-centric language and inclusivity. So PAX itself is about when we're using figurative language, metaphors, adding colour, we choose to use positive imagery and it aligns with, I think, the fundamental underlying principles at Open Strategy Partners. We're all about empathy and understanding people PAX reflects that. We write in a positive way. We write with inclusivity and we avoid combative language references to war. It's surprisingly common in language, very subtle. I find PAX interesting to identify opportunities to use alternative wording. Hey, this is Jam from OSP again, and I'm really happy to be talking with you today about one of the more important writing and editorial codes that we have, and that's PAX, P-A-X. PAX is the Latin word for peace, and this editorial code and applying it to our communications is one of the fundamental moral and ethical decisions that we've made around communication. There's a couple of ways that we strive to be at OSP or things we strive to do and not to do, we won't write negative copy. So there's another code that I'm sure we'll talk about at some point called FUD. We don't do fear, uncertainty, and doubt marketing or promotion for our clients or for ourselves. We want to highlight the good in whatever we're trying to promote. We try very hard to be inclusive. We try very hard to be open to learning new ideas and The PAX principle encapsulates the idea that we don't use violent language. My name is Christine Bueller. I'm a communications consultant at Open Strategy Partners. And in my day-to-day tasks, I write blog posts, I edit landing pages, and I also help craft social media. So the PAX code is about using nonviolent language by replacing metaphors that are more aggressive, more violent, you know, if, like about sports or war with more peaceful and constructive uh, language. Let's explore how this code is used in the editing process. As an editor, you have to keep your eyes peeled for packs. Some expressions are so entrenched in our language that you don't spot them. A quick example that comes to mind is we wrote a comparison piece. We titled it a head-to-head comparison. And using this PAX editing code, we re-looked at that and changed it to a side-by-side comparison. 
it's essentially saying the same thing, but it's removing that combative element because we're all about peace and love and harmony. <laughs> Another thing to be aware of with PAX as an editor is geographic or cultural differences. Some things may be more acceptable than others in different parts of the world. At OSP, we are a distributed team. We have writers all over the world. And I think that PAX helps make me a better writer and a better editor because it compels me to be aware of these differences, which I think is a good thing for everyone. Not using violent language is avoiding using war metaphors, sex metaphors, violent metaphors, sometimes even competitive or sports metaphors when we can describe something in a different way. As a culture, the Anglo-Saxon world, the English-speaking world, uses a lot of violent metaphors, effectively violent language, quite unconsciously. I think even unknowingly, this puts violence on our minds or perhaps makes us less sensitive to the violence in the world. And we decided quite early on at OSP to try to avoid this. I would say I actually don't use PACs that much in my role as an editor, just because I think all the other writers are very aware of this and um, tend not to use it. But there are infrequent occasions where like a more violent metaphor is used. Like sometimes things slip through the cracks. I think that some violent metaphors can also be geographical or regional. Because we have a distributed team, sometimes we are pointing out violent language that other people in other parts of the world don't recognize. That's one place where having a remote distributed team is really an advantage. When writing, there are many different ways you can approach this code. As a writer, it's important to understand that figurative language and metaphor is really useful. You're adding colour to your writing. We certainly endorse that at OSP. However, PAX is about being discerning when you're choosing those metaphors. I think as a writer, it's important not to think about PAX. If you're in the flow, don't interrupt your flow. And if you want to paint a word picture, let it all come out and then come back on your your second read through as a writer to just look for any any word choices that you think could be improved or find a more positive example if you can't find an alternative flag it for your editor you know help i couldn't think of anything better and get your editor to do the work for you i think as a writer for pax is be discerning but don't let it interrupt your flow come back to it or let someone else do it so when I am writing a piece, when I am editing a piece, when I'm having a conversation with someone, I would rather talk about being at the coalface than being in the trenches or on the front lines of something. I like to talk about things that one finds in the wild or in the field. I like to talk about planting seeds and, and reaping the benefits and reaping, harvesting, things fruiting and growing and so on. I really strongly feel that using growth and, and peaceful ways to describe things has an effect on our, on our day and our mood. And I want to say that just staying away from sports and competition metaphors, on the one hand, if we talk about head to head and, and toe to toe, and then, you know, like boxing kind of stuff, it's really aggressive, right? And we can talk about side by side comparisons, for example, or, or, or go another route with that stuff. Frankly, with sports metaphors, there's an interesting side danger that goes along with having an international audience. And the international audience doesn't know baseball or doesn't know cricket or doesn't know rugby or doesn't know sumo or doesn't know where, whatever it is that you love where you come from. We try in many ways, including this way, to be as inclusive as possible by using language that hopefully everybody understands or the, the, you know, the vast majority of people who might read our things. Avoiding sex 
metaphors and dirty jokes and whatever is simply an issue of respect and professionalism and that sort of stuff has absolutely no place in anything that OSP comes near at any time. And I don't have to mention any of the difficult, problematic relationships that our societies in the world have to these issues. It's just off the table here. There's no point. We don't need to. So I actually really love the PAX code and I use it a lot as a writer. I just love it because I think it's very thoughtful and I think it really makes you reflect on how you use language. PAX is a really good concrete representation of our open source ethos at OSP. We are always aiming to encourage cooperation instead of competition. I think the PAX code fits in really well there. Why is this editing code important to readers? How do they benefit from it? As a reader, PAX is important. Metaphors make content fun to read. They can help explain complex concepts. We choose to use positive metaphors, avoiding violent language, because that's part of the ethos at OSP. We believe that positive message is good. We want to kind of embed a subconscious pick-me-up. I think it's important to note that it's not every organisation is going to choose PACs. I mean, for some people, this idea of avoiding violent language is important, like it is for us. For others, maybe not so important. It's not a hard and fast rule, and I think there is room for grey area. I think as an editor, if you call out language that you think may be violent, the writer should have input and, you know, it's a conversation. The writer should get to say, well, this is right for my client. This fits with the voice and tone of the brand I'm writing for. We believe at OSP that it's worth working harder to find a positive message because we want to be the change we want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. As a consumer of content, I watch for this because this is one of those things that I've thought about for a long time. I think sports metaphors are pr pretty much fine in a sports article. And I guess if I am reading something historical that talks about a battle or talks about a conflict or talks about an actual war, that's an appropriate spot to use that sort of thing. But I don't want to use that language when I'm trying to convince someone to adopt an open source solution. I don't want to mix up violent language with highlighting the benefits of selecting a, a particular solution to a problem or trying to convince someone to join a community and make a contribution. I don't think it has any place. And I think I'm left with more calm, with something with a more peaceful result in my mind. If I read something where that's been avoided, I notice now and it bothers me a, a, a little bit if I see that sort of stuff in a context where I wouldn't put it in. PAX is really important to us. And I'd be very curious to hear from from you, from our audience, what you think about this stuff and, and to hear more examples. We have more examples and there's all sorts of interesting ones like bite the bullet in English is not a war metaphor. It's just talking about how old medicine worked, you know, in the beginning days of surgery when, when they didn't have anesthesia. Lots to say. And I would also have fun maybe creating a resource with people of other metaphors that we can choose. We've noticed carpentry, gardening, mining, farming, growing, flowers, trees. There's lots of ways to go. So I'd love to know more. And I'd love to hear about this from everybody. For the PAX code as a reader, it may not always be obvious that what you're reading, we've specifically aimed to use nonviolent language. I think it's a really good practice that should be more widely adopted. I mean, I can't speak for other parts of the world, but violent language and metaphors about sports and war are like, they're very common in the US. And I'm sure that it has some sort of impact on how we think about and process things in our world. I think the, the PAX code for readers, it might be subtle, but I hope it makes readers 
think more about the language they see and just the kind of content they're consuming on a daily basis. Here are a few additional thoughts our teammates had about the PAX editing code. Here's a subtle example of using the PAX editing code. I was editing a colleague's written piece and they used the word foray. I called out foray because it does have in its background a military connotation. And I suggested alternatives, extend, explore, investigate, develop. And the writer said, thanks, I didn't even realise that this was a war word. I think this is a good example of one that sits in the grey area. Foray is probably acceptable to a lot of readers. However, I was the editor, I called out PAX, and it's up to the writer to make that decision. I like the PAX code because once you become aware of it, of you know how often more violent metaphors are used, you just kind of start seeing it everywhere. You know, like when someone points out a yellow car and then you start seeing a yellow car everywhere. It's kind of the same thing. I think we don't realize how surrounded we are by that kind of competitive or destructive language. You know, with the PAX code, once you start seeing that and being more aware of it, I think it can kind of open your eyes. Not that it comes up so often, but I would also strictly avoid religion in the sort of communication I do. I would save that for, you know, if I had the chance to write up what I think about a given theology, for example. But uh, religious metaphors also, avoiding them is a really easy way to avoid uh, offending people. I hope we've successfully navigated our way around this topic. Does violent language stand out for you? Perhaps you'll find yourself choosing a more neutral or positive option in your next piece of writing. Share your examples or questions with us via Twitter at open underscore strategy or email hello at openstrategypartners.com. This was one of the editorial codes we use at OSP. If you'd like to learn more in the meantime, come on over to OpenStrategyPartners.com. Have a look on our writer enablement workshops, case study offering, or get in touch to talk about your strategy or product communication needs. Thanks to everyone who contributed to this podcast, all the P's at OSP. Thanks to our clients who believe in us. Shout out to Patrick Gaumont for our high energy maple syrup flavored theme music and to Mike Snow for additional horn arrangements. Thank you for listening and subscribing. About our three themes on the podcast, you'll hear different members of the OSP team hosting episodes over time. Communicate, all things communication. We share how we tackle writing, editing, word choices, formats, processes, and more. Connect, in-depth conversations with interesting smart people about who they are, what they do, and how they approach their life and work as communicators, technologists, and leaders. Grow. We cover approaches to understanding and expressing the value of what you do, including tools, templates, and practical applications. We also feel strongly about building a mindful, positive, human-first culture at work. That's bound to pop up from time to time, too. This podcast is us figuring out communication, connection, and growing together. Subscribe now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or the podcast channel of your choice. Follow us, suggest guests and topics, ask us questions on social media. We are at open underscore strategy on Twitter. Until next time, I'm Carl Richards, and this is the OSP Podcast. And Jam, I'm still waiting for my Heinzel Mansion t-shirt, please. <laughs>